And we are following breaking news in Anguilla in connection with the case of a Connecticut man who may go on trial for allegedly killing a hotel worker on the Caribbean island. Scott Hapgood was vacationing with his family in April when he says Kenny Mitchell tried to rob him. Mitchell died after a struggle and Hapgood was charged with manslaughter. Errol Barnett is here with how U.S. government officials are backing Hapgood's account. Errol, what are we learning? Uh, well, good morning. CBS News has now confirmed that despite being required to attend Monday's hearing, Scott Hapgood is not in Anguilla and decided against appearing there. Now, it's unclear how this will impact the judge's pending decision on if Hapgood's manslaughter trial will begin. He's maintained his innocence, but people on the island are angry. He hasn't faced uh, any kind of justice for his alleged crime. We are still in shock that a simple vacation that we looked forward to for so long turned into a nightmare. As Scott Hapgood faces a potential trial in Anguilla, he has remained adamant that he and his family's lives were threatened on the day Kenny Mitchell died. Hapgood says on April 13th, Mitchell entered his hotel room with a knife demanding money. That led to a physical struggle which resulted in Mitchell's death. A bellman at the hotel, Joshua Clark, was one of the first people to walk into the room during that fight. I take a peek in. I saw Kenny on his back and Mr. Hapgood over Kenny. He says Hapgood's forearm was on Mitchell's neck. The initial autopsy report showed Mitchell died from positional asphyxia, but a toxicology report obtained by the Hapgood legal team shows a lethal dose of cocaine could have killed Mitchell. I go back and forth to Anguilla in the face of significant dangers to make sure that the facts come out because the hard science shows what really happened. The Hapgood's public appeal for help got the attention of President Trump, who said he would look into the case, tweeting, something looks and sounds very wrong. Just last week, a bipartisan group of seven lawmakers signed this letter asking the State Department for a, quote, ironclad guarantee of Mr. Hapgood's safety and security during his stay in Anguilla. To have the continuing threat of unfair and possibly secret criminal proceedings against them should never happen to any American. But residents of Anguilla are striking a different tone, demanding Hapgood pay a price for Mitchell's death. In August, we spoke to Mitchell's brother, Marshall. What would justice look like for you? As long as you take some jail justice, is a, you take a life. You understand? CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman says Hapgood has benefited from positive press and government help. But she says the Anguillan judge will not allow the U.S. government to affect the ruling. It's one thing to want to clear your name in the environment in which you live. It's another thing to actually try to put pressure on a government of another country. Now, with Hapgood a no-show at today's hearing, it raises a number of legal questions. How will the judge react, and might it affect the judge's decision on moving forward with a trial? Now, there is an extradition treaty between the U.S. and the U.K., of which Anguilla is a territory, but it's just unclear right now if, if that will even be necessary. Interesting turn of events for yeah. Mr. Hapgood, because he's always gone back in the past, and I always found that to be admirable. It just doesn't make sense to me that a hotel guest would kill a worker on the other side, it doesn't make sense that a worker would kill a hotel guest. Yeah. Right. The cocaine uh, factor seems to change things in this case for um, a lot of this people. This has captivated the entire island, which, of course, relies on that. tourism. So we'll see how things progress. Right. Errol, thank you.